Madam President, Excellencies, Distinguished Delegates, Friends. The session of the Commission on the Status of Women is one of the most important annual events at the United Nations. And it takes on even greater significance at a time when women's rights are being abused, threatened, and violated around the world. Progress, won over decades, is vanishing before our eyes. In Afghanistan, women and girls have been erased from public life. In many places, women's sexual and reproductive rights are being rolled back. In some countries, girls go to school, risk kidnapping and assault. In others, police prey on vulnerable women they have sworn to protect. Gender equality is growing more distant. On the current tract, where New Women puts it 300 years away, maternal mortality is increasing, one woman dies every two minutes during pregnancy or childbirth. Most of these deaths are preventable. The impact of the COVID-19 pandemic continues for millions of girls forced out of school, mothers and caregivers forced out of paid employment, and children forced into early marriage. From Ukraine to the Sahel, crises and conflicts affect women and girls first and worst. And at the international level, some countries now even oppose the inclusion of a gender perspective in multilateral negotiations. Dear friends, the patriarchy is fighting back, but so are we. And I am here to say loud and clear, the United Nations stands with women and girls everywhere. The Deputy Secretary General and the Executive Director of UN Women recently visited Afghanistan with a clear message for the authorities. Women and girls have fundamental human rights and we will never give up fighting for them. The United Nations country teams and humanitarian agencies around the world are helping to provide practical support and care for women in crisis situations. Gender equality and investment in girls and women are central to all our humanitarian and development work. Our political and peacekeeping missions continue to promote women's participation in all peace processes, and they have enormous overco overcome enormous obstacles, and they ensure women's priorities are integral to our political work. This is the only route to sustainable, enduring peace. Distinguished representatives, dear friends, let's be clear. The international frameworks are not working for the world's women and girls. They need to change. My initiatives for a stimulus to get the Sustainable Development Goals on track and to reform the global financial s system aim to increase resources for investment in women and girls at the country level. My report on our common agenda highlights gender equality in all that we do. I have instructed the UN system that all our support to member states in preparing for the summit of the future must reflect our commitment to gender equality and women's rights. As part of our common agenda, I commissioned an independent review of our capacity around gender equality across all pillars of our work. The conclusions and recommendations will address structures, funding, and leadership so that we can better deliver for the women of the world. Gender parity in our personnel is a vital step towards gender equality in our work. Five years into the system-wide strategy on gender parity throughout the UN system, we have come a long way. We reached gender parity among the 180 members of the senior leadership and our resident coordinators throughout the countries of the world. Regarding our professional staff, the Secretariat as a whole is forecast to be close to parity in 2025, which is three years before the deadline. 
but, and I must be clear, the obstacles are more difficult to surmount in the missions on the ground. And that is why now our efforts will prioritize areas where progress has been slow. And I hope that member states will understand the need for change and will support us in adapting our rules to facilitate our movement towards gender parity. Distinguished delegates, dear friends, your focus this year on closing gender gaps in technology and innovation could not be more timely. Because as technology races ahead, women and girls are being left behind. The math is simple. Without the insights and creativity of half the world, science and technology will fulfill just half their potential. Three billion people are still unconnected to the internet, but the majority of them, women and girls in developing countries. And in least developed countries, just 19% of women are online. Globally, girls and women make up just one third of students in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. In the tech industry, men outnumber women two to one. But in artificial intelligence, only about one out of five workers is a woman. And artificial intelligence is shaping our future world. Let's hope it will not be shaped in a totally gender-biased way. The COVID-19 pandemic magnified inequalities in access to the Internet and intensified the dangers women and girls face online. Misogynistic disinformation and misinformation flourish on social media platforms. So-called gender trolling is specifically aimed at silencing women and forcing them out of public life. The stories may be fake, but the damage done is very real. Distinguished delegates, dear friends, centuries of patriarchy, discrimination, and harmful stereotypes have created a huge gender gap in science and technology. Women account for just 3% of Nobel Prize winners in science categories. Three years ago, Emmanuel Charpentier and Jennifer Doudna made history as the first all-women team to win a Nobel Prize in science, ever. And teams of men have shared the prize 172 times. Big data is the new gold and the foundation of today's political and business decisions. But it often ignores gender differences or turns a blind eye to women altogether, resulting in products and services that bake in gender inequality from the start. We see gender-biased algorithms proliferate everywhere. And we cannot let the Silicon Valleys of our world become death valleys for women's rights. We need the full contributions of all for a future in which humanity controls technology rather than the other way around. And gender inequality is a question of power. And today I call for urgent action to equalize power in three ways. First, increasing education, income, and employment for women and girls, particularly in the Global South. Connecting women in the Global South to the online world requires us to address rising levels of poverty and inequality. Second, leaders must promote women's and girls' full participation and leadership in science and technology, from governments to boardrooms and classrooms. The United Nations' first ever report on technology, innovation, education, and gender equality provides many recommendations. They must be followed. It calls for gender responsive education and skills training, algorithms that align with human rights and gender equality, and investment in bridging the digital gender divide. More than ever, we need collective action by governments, civil society, the private sector, and the technology community. And third, we must create a safe digital environment for women and girls. The United Nations is working with other stakeholders to advance a code of conduct for information integrity on digital platforms. The goal is to reduce harm and increase accountability while defending the right to freedom of expression. Excellencies, promoting women's full contributions to science, technology, and innovation is not an act of charity or a favor to women. 
it is a must and it benefits everyone. When women get medical services online, their families and communities are healthier. When women access online banking and resources without bias, they start businesses that benefit their societies and economies. When women have access to safe digital platforms, they build communities that can change the world. Look at the Me Too movement. And when women scientists and technologists tackle global problems, they multiply the chance of finding solutions. Many technology leaders, especially women, know that inequality and exclusion are a moral and commercial dead end. Women and girls are leading efforts to make science and technology accessible, inclusive, and safe. And in many countries, girls are studying science, technology, and math in record numbers. This must be followed everywhere. Women and girls will not be silenced. Their demands for their rights and freedoms echo around the globe, and the Commission on the Status of Women is a dynamo and catalyst for the transformation we need. Together, let us push back against the pushback on women's rights, against misogyny, and forward for women, girls, and our world, and I thank you.